I'm going to go through um, an underground video. Uh, basically, we're going to show uh, everything underground. I'm going to try and keep up with the uh, video and uh, narrate it whilst we go. Okay, so we're at the uh, top of the top of the shaft there. Uh, we're walking down the ramp now. You see on the left-hand side the uh, brass board. That's where we uh, tag everybody in, so we uh, understand who is uh, underground or not. Each person carries uh, three tags. One to be at the top, one to be on the bottom, and then one to be on their own person. Uh, that's the cage that we've been talking about. It's the, exactly the same size as the cage in the uh, visitor center. Uh, normally, we can carry uh, 29 personnel plus one uh, cage tenderer. Uh, I think on this cage here, there's probably only about 15 or 18 people, so it can get pretty cramped you know, when we get on there. Um, takes around about uh, 10 minutes to uh, travel from the surface one mile underground to the 4850 level. And uh, when we get to the bottom, um, you'll see us uh, entering the uh, Ross Brow area just here. So the cage tenderer, he will um, put the, um, the cage on chairs. So basically that allows the uh, tension to uh, be relieved off the rope so we can offload and unload uh, heavy pieces of equipment. Because um, we've um, a lot of the equipment is actually placed in the cage and then rebuilt, or sometimes it's actually slung underneath um, the longer pieces and then pulled out uh, into the station. So the cage tenderer allows everybody else off the cage, and then they'll put their uh, second brass on the uh, brass board underground before going to their uh, works area. So as we come out now, you'll see in the photo from Ryan, um, we'll be walking out into the Ross Station area. Uh, total height now is um, 60 feet, and then it uh, chamfers down. And this is mainly so we can get the large Chrysostat steel underground and easily uh, off the slung load. Originally, this was only 10 feet high. Um, so this was a major excavation and also close to the uh, shaft structure. We're now walking towards the uh, workshop, this TMI's workshop. This is where they do all the maintenance on the equipment and also where they, um, they uh, built, reassembled uh, all the equipment after uh, getting it underground. And this is where they are disassembling the equipment now to uh, sling it back up after, uh, uh, out from underground. After that, now we continue walking towards Governor's Corner. This is basically the uh, main intersection uh, underground on the 4850. Um, going in the, that direction towards the north is the West Access Drift, which allows us to uh, walk all the way over to the Yates and the uh, Davis campus. We're now walking towards the, uh, the North Cavern, and we'll enter the cavern uh, at the uh, west end. Um, we have an overlook there. Uh, and then we'll be able to see uh, inside, the, inside the caverns. So as you walk toward the caverns, you can see the, uh, the monorail beams uh, in the crown and on the spring line. You see the uh, ladder access way, scaffold access way to the left of me. And there's the, uh, the, the guys working underground. We have some uh, concrete slab there cast uh, at the bottom. And then further back is the um, cavity drain, which is the drainage layer. This is a nice uh, fly through with, uh, with the drone showing the, uh, the caverns. You can actually see all the shotcrete, uh, which is a spray concrete that seals the, uh, the caverns. Now we've walked down the decline, we're at the bottom, we're at the 4910 level. Um, so this is where the workers are currently working to uh, pour all the concrete. You can see the pedestals in the foreground and um, the shotcrete on the walls and the workers there are, are installing the drainage layer so any water that gets captured can go underneath the base slab and then out of the, uh, out of the drainage system. This is a nice, wa nice walk through uh, with a camera showing the final uh, base slab. Uh, now we're walking um, towards the center of the caverns. This is the, the middle of the cavern, and eventually there will be a steel bridge walking, uh, be a place across this cavern to allow us to connect to the north CUC and south cavern. We're now walking to, uh, towards the uh, spray chamber. This is where we install all that equipment to uh, remove the heat from the experiment, and at the very, very end of that chamber is that 1,200 foot uh, raised bore. 
This is the central cavern, CUC. This is where all the equipment is to uh, run the experiments. But we're using it as a storage area now. We have the concrete bags, and also we have some equipment storage. That's uh, basically the uh, transporter for the cement concrete, and that is the shotcrete machine that they use to spray the concrete. We have, uh, also have two batch plants uh, installed in the CUC, which we mix all the concrete and shotcrete underground. We deliver the concrete in dry super sacks. They put them in the mixer, then we add water, and then it discharges into the uh, transmixers. And now finally, this is the uh, south cavern. This is also the western entrance, and it's a nice overview. We can see that it's uh, slightly behind the north cavern because this was the last one to be excavated and uh, doing a great job. <laughs>